Howdy howdy, this is Mr. Potter. Today we're going to talk about how to install Gridworld as part of our JCreator so that we can use Gridworld on our home system. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open up my internet browser and I'm going to go to our sfiles account. So that's sfiles.nisd.net and what we're going to do is log in. Remember that we log in with our S followed by our six-digit student ID and our password is the first four letters of our last name and the last four digits of our social security number. And then we go to our S drive. That's where the templates are, the stuff that your teachers have available for you. So we're going to go to our S drive. Let me go to templates, math, Potter T, and then we're going to go to our AP Computer Science folder, and we have a zip file that has all of our Grid World stuff in it. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. And so after we download this, we're going to extract this to a folder. I'm going to put it on my desktop, but you can put it wherever it's a convenient spot on your hard drive. I'm going to open it and I get this grid world code folder. Probably the easiest thing for me to do would be to copy it and then paste it onto my desktop. Now this does include the jar file, it does include all of our source code files, and it does also include some PDFs to help us through the grid world assignments. So now I can open this up and I should be able to see our grid world projects as well as some PDFs. So what I'm going to do next, now that I've got this folder on my desktop or in a convenient place, is I'm going to go ahead and open up jcreator. And I'm going to go to File and create a new project. I'm going to choose Empty Project. I'm going to click Next. And then I'm going to change my location from being the default jcreator location to that folder on the desktop that I just created. So I'm going to click on the location button. And I've got this folder, the Grid World Code. I'm going to highlight this folder. I don't want to go into the folder. I just want to make sure that folder is highlighted. Click OK. And notice that it changes my location, my source path, and my output path. I'm going to click Finish a first time. That actually builds the project space. And I'm going to click Finish a second time, which actually enables this. Now, it's going to open up actor.java. Actor.java is not the program that I need. I need a program with a main method, and so I need to go into Projects and expand it. Go into First Project, expand it, and I want to run this bugrunner.java. So this is our bugrunner.java. Notice that we have a main method here, and we've got some other methods that are being called. This I can actually go ahead and play. And of course, because I'm compiling as a project, it's going to actually compile all the files together. Process is completed. It's going to execute it.
and I see my grid world where I've got a bug, I've got a flower, I've got an actor, and I've got a rock. And if I click step, it's going to take each of them one step forward, so everyone acts. A bug acts by moving forward and placing a flower where it was. An actor acts by flipping 180 degrees. A flower acts by turning a shade darker. And the rock acts by doing nothing. So I can either press step to make each object, each actor act, or I can press run to watch them continuously act. So at this point I've got Grid World up and I can make any modifications that we talk about making in class or in our assignments. And we can do whatever else we need to do with Grid World at this point. So once again, this is Mr. Potter. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.